someone sent me a link to a video on YouTube demonstrating how clay is negatively charged. But uh, I will leave a link uh, below so you can go watch it. I was going to do a test like this, but since this is an older video, I think it was over. It was done over nine years ago to demonstrate how clay is negatively charged and proves it. I think this would be something that would be interesting to everybody. But before I get into that, I uh, did a test on a well on one of the pothos pots. The one that had the pothos that was uh, with the long roots that were a meter long. And I found the outcome to be a little weird, to say the least. And uh, I will show you what uh, the outcome was. Now, the first week I had a video on it. I showed you that the pothos did use nitrates. Uh, as a food source. And I said, I'm going to wait another week. I'm not going to add any aquarium water to it or any water to it. And let's see if it uses even more of the nitrates. Now, the funny thing about this is the first week, the potholes use quite a bit more nitrates than the test the week after. And it used far less in the second week of nitrates than it did the first week that I had. Um, the, I think it was like nine point something was the nitrate reading in the aquarium. So we know it was like 9.6 or whatever uh, from the aquarium water. And it brought it down uh, as this test will show down to 5.6. But the same pothos, I thought, okay, I'm not going to add any water to it. We'll see what happens the second week. Well, I was kind of amazed that the second test <clears throat> for the pothos that I did uh, didn't show a substantial decrease in the nitrates. It showed a smaller decrease from the 5.6. If this was like 9.6, it really ate up quite a lot of the nitrates. But now here it is, the same pothos with the root system that was over one meter long. And uh, you're going to notice it, does, it ate up some of the nitrates, but not as much as I thought it should. I mean, if it ate up a lot the first week, why is it the second week it's now slowed down? I, th I think this kind of shows us that the pothos is uh, not something that you can take to the bank that it will consume all nitrates. Because now we have to go on to a third week just to see if the pothos will consume 100% of the nitrates that are left, which is three parts per million, in the container. And I think it probably won't. And like someone did mention, they said, well, your containers with the pothos in it is very small. And how would it have done if, let's say it was a 10 or 20 gallon tank, and it had, let's say, the 9.6 part per million million uh, nitrates to contend with, how would it have done then in a bigger aquarium? And that's true. How much of the nitrates would it have taken out of a larger body of water? But just as just for the experiment to show that, yes, the pothos does eat uh, nitrates, but still after the second week, it can't bring them down to zero. So that means we're going to have to go on to a third week of testing to see if the pothos can bring down nitrates to zero. Okay, what you're looking at here is an aquarium. From a distance, it looks good, great, right? 
However, the aquarium does have some algae in it. And I know a lot of hobbyists are probably watching videos of these pristine aquariums that have zero amounts of algae in them. And I think, I think there's two kinds of people because my aquariums have algae in them. Uh, my antique really doesn't, but the others too, they, they have algae in them. And to me, that's acceptable to have some algae as long as it's not out of hand, right? And if you uh, look at a close up of this particular aquarium, you will look at the uh, plants here and you will see like to the left, there's some algae on some of the leaves and and on the substrate. And it, it for a lot of hobbyists, they'd say, well, this is great. This is perfect. Then you have the other hobbyists on the other hand, and they're, they're looking at a tank like this and say, well, I want a tank with absolutely zero, you know, algae in it. So, you know, there's two camps to that. The, the camp that says, this looks great. It's acceptable to me. Has a little bit of algae. Hey, that's great. I'll, I can do that all day long. And then you have the other hobbyist out there who is looking for that pristine tank where everything looks picture perfect out of a, a mono uh, natural aquarium book. And uh, they would look at it and say, well, look at the algae on it. But anyway, I... I I'm the kind of the individual, like with my goldfish tank or something like that, it does have some algae in it, but you know, it's nothing that I worry about. It's not getting out of hand. I do have uh, snails and uh, placosmus in there to help control the algae, but it never really gets out of hand. So I don't worry about it. You know, you're either going to fall in one of the two categories. Okay, now to get into the clay as negatively charged. There's a video out there, which I was thinking about doing one, but then someone sent me a link. Somebody's already done a video explaining how and proves how clay is negatively charged. And uh, what they do is they get a battery and they have a positive and negative side of the battery, we all know. And they show how the clay actually gets attracted to the positive side of the wire that is inside the mixture that they did. And on the negative charge side, no clay stuck to the wire. I think it's a good video to kind of show you the, the negative and positive charge of clay and why we use it, why we use laterite or why we use uh, safety zorb or oil dry or kitty litter why you use it because it does attract the positive ions which helps move fluids as we know like like this bag right here uh, you can put that if you put it in a canister filter a BCB bag it's actually going to attract the positive ions and and that will prove that a positive charge are attracted to the neg negatively charged kitty litter. And uh, the link will be below in the comments, not in the comment section, but in, in the section that uh, lets you know what uh, the video is about. And if you click on the link, you can watch it. It's a short video, very, very short video. But uh, it just kind of shows that, yes, Clay is negatively charged, and therefore it will attract to positive ions, or vice versa. Positive ions will be attracted to the neg negatively charged substrate of which we are using. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve to attract the ions. This, uh, this could explain why when some people make a plenum, or they make a BCB basket, and they say, oh, things really helped improve because it does attract positive ions out of the aquarium. And, of course, we know um, that uh, the more ions that are bad ions that we can attract out of the aquarium, the better off 
were going to be. But uh, this is just a little video to show you it. I really high, highly recommend that uh, you take the time out to watch the video. Okay, that's it for this video. It was basically give me your ideas of why you think the pothos now did not use up as much nitrates as it did when it was first put into the container. I like to hear your feedback on that. Plus, uh, it was uh, the video I wanted to show you that uh, if you watch the video that I give the link to, you will see and it explains to you how clay is negatively charged. And also, it kind of uh, will explain to you another video that I just did about uh, what's acceptable to you in your aquarium. How much algae is enough? How much algae is too much? And how... Uh, we as hobbyists look at different uh, aquariums as one person may look at it as, wow, that's doing great. Another person may look at it as, oh, that's not doing great in my eyes because it shouldn't have any algae at all. And to me, that's just not realistic to say aquariums should have zero algae. That's, that's not what it is in the wild. It just it just doesn't look natural to me. That's just me. It just kind of just doesn't look natural. Uh, you know, algae is part of the aquarium. Just make sure you have algae eaters to keep it under control. And uh, then um, you'll be happy with what you got. But I do understand. Some people want a pristine looking aquarium. But sometimes putting your, I don't know what they say, um, your hopes up that high you know, like thinking you're going to be a, a Michael Jordan basketball player. Sometimes putting all your hopes and dreams up that high, they're not realistic. I guess that's what I'm saying. Anyhow, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this video. And it's a short one. Unbelievable, huh? Short video. I make a short video. But uh, I just thought that uh, it was interesting. You should watch the link. And until next time... This is Dr. Novak. Uh, have fun. Hope you enjoy your fish and your aquarium. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And see you next time. And thank you for watching.